So, Pontus, what we'll do today is we will gather some angels and we will hear the very most favorite moments from their Angelina experience, whether it be musical or visual or from an interview. And it will be a way of introducing a wide spectrum of angels from all over the world. Yeah, that'll be fun. And it's also a, a great uh, challenge for every angel to pick one moment. We had to give everyone six months notice for them to get their head around the challenge. <laughs> okay, let's roll them. Should we get things started, Alan? Yep. Yeah. So let me give some background. What happened was in one of our podcasts, we got a comment from Andy. And he said, why don't we do a podcast where we have Angelina Jordan's angels uh, declaring their favorite moments of either a song or a lyric or from a book. And Chris Walker, a bottom right, said, oh, I was thinking of doing that. And so it is fitting and appropriate that the first episode of this podcast, we have Andy Schnell as our first guest, and we have... Chris Walker, Big Angie fan, as a co-host, because that ties it all together. You were on the first season, weren't you, of Wrapped in a Warm Blanket? So I think you have a great reputation amongst, amongst <laughs> the fans. You have very long tentacles to reach out to all of the angels, and that's why I asked you to help us by finding other guests for this podcast. And you have more than obliged, Andy. You are single-handedly responsible for supplying all of the guests for the rest of this episode. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And, and I spent most of my time on YouTube with the reaction videos and, of course, watching the original Angelina videos and interacting with the angels in the comment section. That's my home. I don't spend much time on Facebook until Rusty invited me to, to join the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. fan club. And of course, now I've joined all the other fan clubs on Facebook, but I, I don't spend much time there. I spend all my time on YouTube. Okay. And a lot of times when I see a new reactor coming on the scene and reacting to an Angelina song for the first time, I get the impression that they always say, oh, this is a request from Andy Schnell. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do have a long history of both enticing just through comments for reactors to check out Angelina, as well as donating a few dollars to, to help that enticement. Money talks. Chris, maybe that's what we should do with you. We should request which beach we want you to walk along in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think probably that helps my viewership a little bit. People get to also look at the Hawaiian scenery. Yeah, I know. If Pontus has the choice of visiting me or you, I think he'll choose to visit you in Hawaii <laughs> rather than me in Bristol. <laughs> so, Andy, let's get down to business. Tell us uh, about your favorite moment and tell us why you chose it. My favorite moment is a lyric from Suspicious Minds. And it's when Angelina sings, if an old friend I know stops by to say hello. That lyric just wells up incredible emotions in me because there are so many old friends I wish that would stop by and say hello. Uh, we just don't see old friends nearly as often as we did in our younger days. So that lyric just wells up tremendous, tremendous emotion. And I'll have to say it also has a second meaning when I listen to Angelina sing that lyric. Sometimes I feel that Angelina is my old friend and she has now stopped by once again to sing to me. That's beautiful. Let's hear the clip, shall we? If an old friend I know Stops by to say hello Would I still see suspicion in your eyes? Angelina has the most welcoming voice I've ever heard in my life, and she <laughs> welcomes me into... The stories that she sings all the time. I've always had trouble with lyrics. I think even when I was 20 years old, my hearing was not that acute. So in the 60s, when Herman's Hermits were singing, there's a kind of hush all over the world. I thought they were singing, there's a can of hash all over the world. 
Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, the 70s. You know, my, my, my ears sometimes play tricks on me. No, that is true. I think it happens to everybody. The songs that we grew up with, we sang along and guessed at the lyrics. And with Angelina, we find out many, many years later that we didn't really quite understand the lyrics as they were supposed to be. It's interesting about the lyrics. You know, people talk about how she's such a storyteller and how they're hearing the lyrics for the first time. But in a way, I have the opposite thing where the lyrics don't matter that much. And I remember when I first heard Gloomy Sunday, and I've heard this from other reactors, that at first they thought it was in a foreign language. I thought it was in a foreign language because she was very much just doing it like phonetically. But that didn't matter to me. It was just the beautiful sound of her voice. That's kind of an ongoing thing I talk about in some of my reactions is that you can see where some words are pronounced in a way where you might not understand their meaning. But for me, you know, it's who cares. It's because of how beautiful it sounds. So it's kind of an interesting counterpoint to the idea that she makes the lyrics more important and, you know, she's a storyteller. So I think there's that other side. It's just how she makes the word sound. Yeah. I've had that same thing with a French singer called uh, Milena Farmer, which I also really enjoy. And uh, of course, I don't know any French, so I don't know what she's singing about. But it's like, <laughs> then it's really like uh, her voice is just like a, um, a beautiful instrument. Jésus, j'ai peur de la douleur. And that's what I get with Angelina also, some of her songs is what she does with her runs. It's just such a beautiful instrument. Three years ago, when Pontus suggested to me that we should do a podcast together, it never occurred to me that after 30 or 40 episodes, we would not even be near running out of material because it is such a rich fountain of emotion and feeling. And it's like describing reality. Where do you begin? And you can go back to the same thing over and over again and find something new. Like this song, especially like the opening lines of this version of Suspicious Minds. I know what it's going to sound like. And every time it's, I'm just taken aback by, by how good it sounds. And every time I hear some new little nuance in the voice. Yeah, it is incredible. the mark of a true artist that uh, you could listen to the same song hundreds of times. And uh, on hearing number 220, you hear something you've never heard before. It's truly remarkable. And I hope that there'll be plenty of angels who will put in the comments section on this podcast episode their desire to tell their favorite Angelina moment so that there could be future episodes mm -hmm. like this. We should make you our executive producer, Andy. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Thank you, Andy. Yours will be the first of this episode and we will have your recommendations to follow and it should be a very interesting podcast thanks andy thank you thank, thank you. you hi everyone this is uh, chris walker here in hawaii with alan and pontus and the woman that i have known from her comments is grandma ellen and we're here to look at another Angelina Jordan moment. I'm really glad to participate. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we're glad to have you. It's wonderful how we span the globe because we have Pontus and I are in Europe. Chris is in Hawaii and Ellen is near Seattle, Washington. Right. So it really brings the World Wide Web to our little home. <laughs> so Ellen, how long have you been an addict of Angelina Jordan? I think it's been about two years now. And I'm trying to remember which song I heard first. I think it was Fly Me to the Moon. And then right after that, it was I Put a Spell on You. And I just was struck by this young girl. There was just something compelling about the way she looked. I don't mean the physical beauty, but in her look, you know, there's more than you can describe physically about her. And I just was struck by that. And I thought, who is this girl that is singing so beautifully and so maturely at such a young age? This is insane. 
at first started out as a curiosity, but then there was really something compelling in her voice too. There's a look about her that just in, in those early years, especially this girl shines. Then I just was like, whoa. And so of course you think immediately child prodigy. And then as I kept digging and listening to reactions and learning more about her, Oh, I did fall in love. And of course, I learned a lot by some of the musician type reactors about what they were hearing. And of course, I was impressed that she was singing jazz right off at such an early age and singing it in a sophisticated manner, not in a simplistic manner. And the more I found out about her, and especially interviews like this Linmo interview and that Shield interview, it just struck me that this child was in Coon had not lost that connection that we come with when we're born and she was beyond toddler age and it appeared as though she still had that connection to the realm from which we come and it was just the fascination that just didn't stop and then the more I learned of her family and like her relationship with her grandfather the more I realized this girl was born to the right people and at the right time and in the right place. And then the story, of course, that talked about with this Linmo interview, it's about the book that she wrote. Let's watch the interview now, and then we can talk more about it okay. after we see the segment from that interview. Okay. Okay. Beskriver du lite vad som... Vad du tänkte dig egentligen när du hade mött henne, ja? Ja, det som är hjärtat. Verden er veldig rar. Akkurat der og da følte jeg at døren i hjertet åpnet sig, og at det blev fylt med masse lys. Det var som det fantes fra jord til himmel en trapp. Jeg klatret opp trappene. Det å kunne gjøre noe for et annet menneske var så stort. Vanskelig å si akkurat. It moves me to tears. I love the whole interview. It's hard to put into words. She's writing about, I mean, just the resonance was all of those things that I ever heard from the mystics. And so it just profoundly moves me. And it actually reaffirms my, um, I was getting really discouraged in my own life for, for various reasons. I've always been on a path of seeking and growth and I was getting very discouraged and it just reminded me of the interconnected web of being. There's a wonderful moment in that interview where she sits back in the chair and she has this moment of profound composure. Yes. Um, it might be a reaction to the applause. When I see that, it's almost like she is a queen and she knows she is a queen, but she does it in a humble way. And to me, she has the wisdom of a sage at that moment. Yes. And she has a certain type of profundity. Did you see her composure and did you see how it, it wasn't that she was soaking up the applause. It was a very profound self-belief that yes. she understands the nature of charity. And, yes. and that looked to me says it all. Yes. A real centeredness, a real groundedness of her own being yes. so that she could speak the truth about the story. She's humble and... You can see that she doesn't want to say that she gave the shoes away too loud. And Linmo has to get her to repeat <laughs> it louder each time until it's loud enough for the audience to hear. Well, she wants to tell the story, but also, you know how a good thing can be spoiled when it's talked about too much. And she knows, she understands it's not just about her. The commitment that girl made to pray for her is as important as her commitment to sing barefoot. And that's why she carries that girl in her heart. They're equals. There's not one above the other there. They're equals. Two souls met and a really profound thing happened. It's a story that blows me away. It would be a wonderful teaching story in a spiritual tradition. It's wonderful that we can have favorite moments 
which are not musical and they're not part of her singing, but they're outside of her actual performances. It's wonderful that we can do that because it shows why we angels who know her well are really enchanted with her because she's more than just her music and her singing. I'm also very excited about the future when millions and millions of people are going to be familiar with Angelina and her persona and her mission in life. What will happen? That's what I'm really <laughs> excited about. What kind of impact will she have on the society at large? Maybe this podcast will be put in a time capsule and open up in 300 years for future generations to understand about Angelina Jordan. If they have the technology, you mean. <laughs> One thing that people really haven't talked about the future that's exciting to me is that the book could have a renaissance in sales. A lot more people could I become aware so. of the book. When I have the actual hardcover of the book, yeah. not in English, you know, Norwegian. Oh, I would and love so I looked at it. I use like Google Translate to hold my phone over the words so I translate them into English. But well, I've cried in a number of my reactions. I cry fairly often listening to Angelina Jordan. I didn't expect to cry with the book, but I totally, it, it totally made me cry. Mm -hmm. One other thing you were talking about, that moment of composure, and it reminds me of a lot of times reactors saying, I wonder if she knows how good she is. And I think <clears throat> that yes, she does, but not just in the sense of musically good. She knows how good she is as a person. She's been allowed to have her fullness of self. Not everybody gets raised with that. The parenting and the whole family that's around her, she's been allowed to explore and experience her fullness of self. And that's wonderful. That's beautiful to see. That too gives me a lot of hope. Thank you very much, Ellen. I hope a lot of people who watch this podcast will be introduced to that interview for the first time. Because oh, it's one I thing to so. know her songs, but it's another thing to see that interview because that interview is really quite special. And the camera work really captured the essence of Angelina during that interview. Yes. So thank you for choosing that. We appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes, okay, yeah. thank you. So nice to meet you, Ron. Welcome to this nice podcast. To meet you too. So, Ron, how long have you been a fan of Angelina Jordan for? I've been a fan for about five years. What's the first song you heard from her? A Million Years Ago by Adele. And that's a very emotional song. And one of the songs that, that she puts a great deal of emotion into. And I, I was just struck. I think the second was Born to Die. Well, that's a great one-two punch to start with. The yeah. vocals on both of those are just totally amazing. How did she affect you in your daily life? She affected me emotionally in a way that I've not been very often before because she elicits the emotion. She just made me feel that there's a lot of hope for you today. I have two children myself, and so I felt that going forward, there's hope for them, there's hope for younger kids today. There's even hope for the world. This is much more Angelina's future to appeal to the younger generation. And it's difficult for us to imagine, us old timers, how young people hear Angelina and what their reaction is because they have a different perspective totally. So it's really interesting for us to explore that. Young people are into the pop songs and a certain style of music. We're into some of the old classics and jazz and so on, and most young people are not. Uh, the only thing that I have seen to some extent is that Angelina has created some interest in certain young people, you know, in some of the older music. We saw that in some of the crowds at the concerts. It was mostly older people, but not all. Yeah. Even young people know Bohemian Rhapsody. And so when she sings it, it has them recalculate their view of her. She can do EDM, she can do something like Above the Water, or she can do something like Faded, mm -hmm. which has a very, very contemporary feel to it as well. Yeah, she has the ability to do anything she wants. Yeah. And I think she has her strength or her roots in jazz and classic music. We've seen that she can pull off anything and 
It really doesn't matter. She has the vocal skills and she has the emotion. Pontus speaks three languages and m many people in Europe will speak three or four languages. But it's as if Angelina speaks 50 different languages and she yes. translates freely across all generations and all cultures. I think Mount Everest, she might have gotten some new young fans with that. That's a very contemporary Absolutely. song. That one shocked me. I was not expecting that, but she changed it. And <laughs> when she did it, it became something that was more attractive. So she added the jazz element and it became a different song. There were many favorite moments and I couldn't pick one specifically. The big thing that really impacted me more recently was her version of Heal the World by Michael Jackson. And it impacted me because I remember when she spoke with Quincy Jones and he said that Angelina reminded him of Michael Jackson. I don't know if he really knew her as a person. I saw it with both. Michael Jackson was very charitable and humanitarian and he wanted peace and love in the world. And when Angelina sang this song, we think about the times that we're in, there are people suffering, there's conflict, and Angelina is the right person to sing Heal the World. Angelina brings tears to many people, but only certain songs for me. I appreciate them all, but that one impacted me and brought tears. It was the emotion she put into it. She meant it, and she felt it. Even that was different than Michael Jackson. He made it a pop song, and it was legendary, but her version impacted me a different way. Let's listen to it. There's a place in your heart, and I know that it is love. In this place, it was brighter than tomorrow. And if you really try, you'll find there's no need to cry. In this place, will feel there's no hurt or sorrow there are ways to get there if you care enough for the living make a little space make a better place hear the world i make it a better place for you Yeah, I got something in my eye there towards the end. <laughs> yeah, I got something in my eye towards the beginning. I've heard it enough times now that it doesn't impact me quite as emotionally on the outside, but I still feel it every time. Yeah. This is the first time I've heard it with headphones. The sound's mm -hmm. 
much more real and much more emphatic. And I heard something with that song just now for the first time I have not heard from Angelina before, and that is her pleading. She's pleading with us to make the world a better place. Yeah, it's, uh, it's what I meant before when I said she meant it. Yeah. The thing that's attractive about this song is that it's a culmination of everything that started when she was a young child. Yeah. She started out with, you know, giving the shoes to the orphan girl. <laughs> and from there, she was asked what she was going to do with the money from Norway's Got Talent. And she said she wanted to give it to the poor children. She went and sang at the Nobel Peace Prize celebration, again, committing to spread love and peace through her singing. She had an interview and she said, with music, I can give love to everyone. And then to heal the world, it just says that she's very consistent with her goals in life. And she really hasn't wavered from that. And I think, again, heal the world is just the culmination. We are all angels in the sense that we follow her closely. And the closer we follow her, the more we realize how totally integrated her charity work and her humility and her modesty and her talent, they're all interwoven so that one complements the other. And th that is part of the poetry about her, which makes her so special. And the love, not just the commitment to charities, but the love that she has inside her. And that came through in full force during her concerts this summer you know, repeatedly telling her fans how much she loves them yeah. and how much they mean to her. <laughs> what artist does that? And I don't think she was trained on it or read about it or anything. Yeah. It just comes naturally. When many things go bad at the same time, it's called a perfect storm. So maybe we should call this a perfect paradise because so many good things are coming together at the same time. Yes. <laughs> I think she was brought here for a reason. And that is to heal the world. Well, Ron, I think that's a perfect way to end this conversation. You've said it exactly in one sentence. That's why she's here, to help heal the world. So thank you, Ron. You have opened thank our you. eyes, and we look forward to meeting you again in the future. It sounds great. And Pontus and Alan, Chris, nice to meet you all. And nice to meet you. Welcome, Kyle. Hey, how you doing, Alan? Welcome. You've come all the way from Alabama to join us. That's right. Chelsea, Alabama. God's country. <laughs> we span the four corners of the world. We're Hawaii, England, and Sweden, and Alabama, so we really are worldwide angels. And you were saying you discovered Angelina about two and a half, three years ago. That's true. Yes, I was just uh, browsing YouTube looking for some entertainment and came across her, listened to a couple of songs and had to go. And it was a week later, I was uh, basically doing the same thing. And I thought, you know, I'm going to look up that girl that I listened to last week. And uh, I looked in my search history and found out who she was and started listening to her. And I've listened to her every day since. I've never missed a single day. Alan, I started listening to Angelina probably about the time you started posting a lot of your videos. It's been about three years. I remember you getting started and getting help from your daughter. My, my daughter helped me the first three months. And then I discovered this fellow in the south of Sweden who's been my mentor ever since. <laughs> high five. High five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to hear that. High five! Oh, oh. So, yeah, that uh, was funny. I work as a, an online marketing consultant. So I teach a lot. So I have that built in to talk at the same level as my students. When it came to Alan, I had to talk like a three-year-old. What Pontus is very modestly saying is that he has the patience of a saint. Isn't that remarkable that an artist connects with you on such a high level that you have to listen every single day? What do you think is the most important aspect of Angelina that makes you get addicted? 
when I first went down that rabbit hole, there were two days where I woke up in the morning, literally got on the computer and didn't get off the computer till bedtime, listening wow. to her. Listening to her every day is almost like therapy. I lost my wife two and a half years ago, and That's it was hard. a rough time. I was a hard sell. I listened to her for a good 10 days before I let myself come to the realization that she's the best vocalist I'd ever heard in my life. And I was almost embarrassed to say that as a 65-year-old man, saying that a 15-year-old girl was the best vocalist. It was a challenge for me to admit it. But yeah. I say it now without any qualms, any doubt. Yeah, I can relate to that. When I started out, I had my guard up. I'm not going to get sucked into this and become a fanboy, but now I'm basically a total fanboy. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard her, a apart from the tears, it was the pure disbelief because it, it was so out of anything I had, I had experienced before. I kept having to listen over and over again because it was sort of like hearing a new language I'd never heard before and trying to understand the rhythm and the sound of it. I, I had to rewrite all the rules. Honestly, there wasn't just one moment that just blew me away. There came a time where I had to admit the things that she was doing to me emotionally, but I cry a thousand times, and it's just something that she has, but she affects me like nobody's ever affected me. When I hear her voice, sometimes it's just, I can't help but cry. It's the difference between real men don't cry and real men should cry. It's everything about her. It's not just her singing. It's about the person she is and what she stands for and the dedication that she's had all of her life. She's done so many things that could fill a dozen lives. And sometimes it's like seeing a Van Gogh and you're so moved that you just come to tears. What eight-year-old gives away her prize money that she just won? One of the most moving songs, I'll Be There. First few words that came out of her mouth, I just blurted out, she's sick! Like I was kind of somehow defending her. The song, The Giving, a Charity, it just sums her up. Shall we listen to that song? I'll be there. Okay, let's go. You and I must make a plan. Salvation bed where there is love. I reach at my hand to you. I
just call my name. I'll be there. I always forget how good that is. I really like at the at the end there where she says the word there. It goes there. It's just so beautiful the way she sings that. She was poorly when she sang this. She had a cold and you can hear it in her voice, but it doesn't matter. She has such a strong work ethic of being able to perform in any conditions. It's remarkable how professional she is. Now, I think in some ways her being sick, you know, actually adds to the vocal quality of that. The emotion is just so palpable in this one. I did a review of this where I was comparing it to the Michael Jackson version. And he has a very, very sweet voice in his version, but that's it. It's a sweet voice. But in her version, it's like when she says, I'll be there, it's yes, she is going to be there. From my understanding, one of the girls that was in the video was actually at the event. It was very touching that Angelina refused to take the doctor's orders not to uh, sing. I've been telling people about Angelina for two and a half years. And I feel like I'm dragging this kid around. And I go, hey, I got this kid right here that I want you to meet. His name is Elvis Presley, and he's going to be somebody one day. Yeah. And they're not listening. But it's just a matter of time. She just had 300 million viewers watching her sing at the soccer awards. So her time is about to arrive. Think of how much she affects us. It might take not so long time before a lot of people are affected by her as we are. Mm -hmm. And that is something I really look forward to. What kind of impact will she have on this society at large? It's going to be like a revolution. Yeah, and she will still stay humble because it's not about her. People may react to her, but it's not really about her. It's about what people have inside of them. And she's just a catalyst. For me, she's like a role model. For a 65-year-old man to say a 15-year-old girl is my role model yeah. is humbling in itself. <laughs> the generosity, the kindness, the love. We're so lucky that our, at our stage of life that we can be open to having a 17-year-old girl as our role model. Because logically, it doesn't make any sense. But... We're lucky that we're open enough to realize that it actually does make a lot of sense. We hope to hear many more Michael Jackson songs from Angelina Jordan. And we also hope that one day she is as famous as Michael Jackson is and as appreciated as Michael Jackson is. So many different levels of fame and you don't realize it until you're tracking someone who's in the public eye. I really do think that there's a good chance that she could be, you know, as big or bigger than somebody like Adele. She could just have this monster kind of ballad that just has the whole world weeping when they listen to it on the radio. And, you know, and that's when she's off to the races. Republic Records knows what they have because at the gala event, uh, not only was Monty Lipman there, who's the head of Republic Records, but so too was the chairman of the Universal Music who is the parent company taking a photo with Angelina. So they view her the same way we do. I find it hard to believe that she won't be as big as Adele or even bigger because of all the input I get from different reactors and vocal coaches. And um, it's interesting that you spoke of that, Kyle. Uh, some people are not instantly converted and i was one of those you can't just have her playing in the background you actually have to listen to her to get it when it hit me it hit me like a ton of bricks and i went back and i listened to all those other songs i thought were just good and they were incredible <laughs> yeah. and the more i listened to them the more incredible they became and I think I've watched every video and every song she's ever done. I've spent so many hours of watching her. But it's one of the best things I've ever done in my life. She just fills my heart every day with joy, listening to her sing. It's exactly why we started our podcast, because it's a mystery and it happens to everyone. And 
we can't explain it. And we're spending many hours not explaining it. You know, the thing is, the people that don't get it, I understand because I didn't get it for 10 days. But something was still drawing me to listen to more of her. And I think it was when Smiley Face, one of the reactors, did a comparison between Angelina and Adele. Oh, yeah, um, I remember that one. <laughs> and said, there's a child that sings better than Adele. And I was like, you're right. There is a child that sings better than Adele. And that's when I realized it was okay for me to say the same thing. That's why one of my goals with my channel is I want people to just give her a chance because she can be an acquired taste. So I'm telling people, right. okay, it's okay if you don't particularly are moved by this song the first time you hear it. But listen to these 10 songs, sitting down with no distractions, headphones on, and you might find that suddenly something clicks there and you see the magic of Angelina. I sent my daughter who's not a big fan of Angelina. She thinks she's okay, but I sent her my sweet Valentine. And she actually replied back and said, oh, that was excellent. And that's when I discovered exactly how good it was. If you say to someone, here, this is the best food you will ever taste in your life, the immediate gut reaction is to say, no, it is. It's very ordinary, very plain. People have to discover it for themselves. If you have a teenage child, and you're trying to teach them something, sometimes you can't teach them. They have to learn it for themselves. It's just an aspect of human nature. Okay, Kyle, thank you. We appreciate having you on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was an honor being on your show. Great. <laughs> okay. okay. You take care now. Y'all have a wonderful day. Welcome, James, all the way from Colorado. Yes, yeah. right near the Rocky Mountains. I'll start, I guess, with my experience with Angelina Jordan. So I think both Pontus and Alan, your first introduction to Angelina was her performance of Bohemian Rhapsody on AGT Champions. Oh, also for me. All right, so we're four for four on that. So what happened when I... Pulled up YouTube one day and I saw, you know, all those videos that show up at the top of the screen there. And there was Angelina with her artwork wearing her colorful outfit. And that caught my attention. And then I saw that the song that she was performing was a very interesting song to be performing on a talent show, which was, of course, Bohemian Rhapsody. And that was enough to make me click on that video. Now, this was the day that it came out. This was January the 6th, 2020. And I clicked on that and, of course, saw a little bit of an interview with her beforehand. And then she walked out on stage. And, of course, I noticed she was barefoot. I thought, well, well that's really interesting as well. She had the short conversation with Heidi Klum. And uh, they said that she'd won Norway's Gun Talent when she was seven years old. And then I was, wow, this should be really interesting. <laughs> And she started the song a cappella, And then when she sang that first line, too late, my time has come. And I just, the voice just, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what a voice. And for the rest of the performance, I just sat there kind of mesmerized. And that was the beginning of my Angelina journey. And that day, and for at least a couple of weeks thereafter, Consistently, each day, I was looking for performances by her on YouTube. I was looking for reactors on YouTube. I found a Smiley Faces channel, and she's got some wonderful reactions there as well. And that was sort of my introduction to a lot of the videos from Angelina. And it was a lot of fun to watch the reactions by Smiley Face. Uh, her first one is still probably my favorite reaction video on YouTube to Angelina where she played Stay, and then she played Always On My Mind, the tribute to Angelina's grandfather. I still rewatch that reaction <laughs> frequently. It's just, it's so much fun to share an initial moment of seeing and hearing Angelina with someone. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoy that.
When it comes to my favorite Angelina moment, I can't say that I have a favorite. I picked a favorite for this video, but there are so many, of course, yeah. and for so many different reasons. I'll just mention some of my favorite performances by her when we were young. I think she was 13 the summer before, or right before AGT, Loving You, which is incredible performance when she was 11, I think. I really like that reaction from Ceci Dover. She's just blown away by yeah. the power in her voice and yeah. Loving You. It's so different from her other performances. Yeah. That's one of the things with Angelina, you hear her and then it's funny to see reactors hear her for the first time and they think, oh, so now I know what she sounds like. But no, <laughs> actually, I think it takes about 10 videos before you start to realize, I don't really know what she sounds like. And she sounds like a lot of different singers. Uh, incredible, all of them. So there was Love and You. And then oh, another one I was going to mention is Mount Everest. And then Love is a Game is another one that I'll mention, which I think was a TikTok performance. And that one absolutely blew me away. The one that I've chosen here for my favorite moment is a tribute that she did. And the gentleman's name was, I think, Ari Ben. And I don't know too much about him. He was a Norwegian author, playwright, and visual artist. I mean, he had passed away, actually, I think on Christmas Day, 2019. And I think it was the next day that Angelina posted her tribute. And it was just her and the guitar, which is a very intimate setting, of course. And she sang the song Trampoline. He had depression. He committed suicide. And he yeah. was married to the crown princess in Norway. And so he was the son-in-law of the king of Norway. So he had a very high profile. Yes. Yeah. And I also, I read that he was friends with the director of Angelina's video, I Put a Spell on You. And of course, I read that he loved Angelina's music. There are some lyrics in that song that I found especially touching, given the context of it. And I think the intimate setting, the fact that it's a tribute from her, and we all know how respectful and authentic she is in these tributes, that combined to, to let me think that this was a nice uh, choice. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. 
You had a pretty strong reaction there, Chris. Yeah, I got something in my eye. There. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I hadn't heard that for quite a while and I forgot how it's just so beautiful in its simplicity. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very intimate setting and obviously it's a very poignant setting. It's amazing how an artist can express their emotions through their art so much better than when they're not in art mode. And also, what struck me, which I saw just now for the first time, is just as she was starting to play, she tried to smile and she wasn't able to. Which really yeah. hits home about how genuine her emotion was. And I also, I think, you know, that was something where I could see how an insensitive person could like totally miss the point and talk about like, well, she's making mistakes with the keyboard and everything. And, you know, the volume's too low and all of that stuff does not matter at all. You know, mm -hmm. it's the, just the quality of the feeling there. Yeah. And one of the things I was going to say is if you told someone, hey, there's this incredible singer that I'd like you to listen to. And that was the first time that they listened to her, they would think, what do you mean, an incredible singer? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, there's nothing bombastic about it or anything like that. It's just as simple as you say, straightforward, you know, and just pluck it on the guitar. But one of the things I was going to mention is that once you understand the incredible talent that she has, and you understand what kind of person she is and what's behind her performances and her expression, her performances then carry a certain gravitas that uh, others don't. Just knowing that it's her, you know, if you hear a Beatles song, even if it's not a, a famous a Beatles song, because it's the Beatles, you think, oh, that's the Beatles. There's this weight behind it. And I feel the same way with Angelina. There's one line I just wanted to mention in that song, and I thought that the context of this made it especially poignant and that's the line when i dream of dying i never feel so loved we can let the viewers decide for themselves what that might mean in this context but for me that just that spoke to me in the moment beautiful i i was going to say i know she she has said in some interviews that she'd rather be writing or singing than speaking. It's like she has some difficulties in finding words like that with speech. And this song is like an example of how she chooses to express herself instead of speaking to the family or in other ways expressing it. She just takes up this guitar and starts singing. And it's pretty obvious that it's not very well rehearsed. It's the feeling behind it. And that feeling is on point. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Superman and Clark Kent. Clark Kent is a mild-mannered reporter who isn't very extroverted and a little bit shy. But then his alternative identity is he's Superman with superpowers. And that's sort of like how Angelina Jordan is. Yeah, I've actually mentioned that sometimes in my comments on YouTube. Is she has this alter ego. And she has this superpower that she can turn on and off. When she comes out and sings Mount Everest, for example, she's very quiet and she's thanking everyone. And when I first heard that, I thought, well, the volume's too low. I'm not going to be able to hear her when she sings. <laughs> and then she comes out with the first line of the song and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, she can turn that on and off and become this superhero. Yeah. yeah, another recent example of that is her latest performance of Bohemian Rhapsody. She came out quite nervous on that in her first waving to the crowd, you know, it's a nervous teenager, and then just gave, you know, that was another one that had me in tears with just how good those vocals were. I think there should be a, a remedy for dehydration from Angelina Jordan's fans because they shed so many tears. We need some type of medication <laughs> for this. The Kleenex people are going to be wanting her to be their spokesperson for their ads. Exactly. Thank you, James. You've added a great contribution to how we view Angelina Jordan. Thanks. Thank you for inviting me. It's nice to talk to all of you. Okay. Yeah, and I especially want to thank you because I hadn't, you know, I hadn't seen that for a while, and I certainly wasn't expecting that impact. And 
That's what you'd like to get from Angelina Jordan. Okay, Chris, we've heard the other five angels, and now it's down to the three hosts to describe what for them has been the most moving and dramatic moment of their Angelina Jordan experience. <laughs> That's an easy one, right? <laughs> yeah. So in, in 25 words or less, Chris, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> he has a sadistic side. We know that. So Right. Well, of course, I have many moments, so I couldn't really say which one tops them all, but I chose three different moments. One of my favorite moments when Angelina Jordan was younger is she's at a charity concert in Seoul, South Korea, and Grandma Mary was filming from backstage, and she just caught this beautiful moment. Here she goes. So she has the bare feet, of course, and I just love how she's like... This is a huge audience and she's just eager to get out there. She's actually skipping as she as she goes out there. I just think that's a wonderful yeah. essence of Angelina moment. The skipping part, she doesn't just walk out there. Oh, I'm so excited to be out here. It doesn't bother her at all that there's 40,000 or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you had some other favorite moments. Yeah. Well, I have actually two favorite moments coming from the same performance. My introduction to Angelina was her... America's Got Talent performance. There's a recent performance of Bohemian Rhapsody. Even better, I felt she had never quite really reached the epic heights that she did with that particular performance until this one. She's always kind of shy before she starts a performance. And I just thought that in this one, she was even more shy than usual. It's like she, but then of course, she switches to this superb a cappella beginning, which I think outdid the AGT a cappella part. You know, once she's inner element of singing, it's all that she's in that other world where she's just full of confidence. And so this performance in general, this is one where I thought she did reach the heights of her AGT performance, especially what's coming up here. Anywhere the wind blows doesn't really matter to performance is great. The AGT, there's that climax of the song when she goes into that belt and here she replaced it with this gorgeous, gorgeous run that I think is, you know, even better than the belt. Yeah, your yeah. turn, Ponte. Okay, thank you, thank you. I've selected a clip from I Put a Spell on You and I've selected this clip because whenever I hear Angelina here, it always takes me back to that moment when I first heard it. It's something about the timing of her singing in this clip that just makes me think, oh, she has everything under control. I can relax and just enjoy. What's up?
Yeah. And it's also how she says anyhow at the end is magical to me. She goes into this almost theatrical sounding part. She could do Broadway if she wanted to. <laughs> <clears throat> this clip is also showing off very different styles mm. in a very short time span. Pontus, if you and I ever interviewed her, one of the questions we should ask is, how many times do you watch the original before you do your cover? She might just say once or twice. Exactly. Because she may just have a photographic mm -hmm. memory for music. Okay, so over to you, Alan. <laughs> Choosing a favorite moment of Angelina is like saying, which of your children do you love the most? It's an impossible <laughs> question. And I want to pick two also runs. The primal howl that she did live in Norway last summer, Two Million Miles, I thought that was remarkable. And that's been mentioned many times. And the performance of Bohemian Rhapsody she did in the garage with Mary, her grandmother, is a remarkable performance, especially the way they look at each other and the way they bounce off of each other. But what I've chosen is something different and special, and it's something you can see this clip 20 times and not realize what it's all about. And when she's being interviewed at 12 years old, and she's spontaneously singing Diamonds Are Forever. If you don't look at her, but just look at her right hand, the way she moves her right hand as she's singing, it's a combination of the musical conductor and a weaver. And she's sort of guiding her song with her right hand. Instead of watching her foot tapping, She's using her right hand and just from watching her hand, understand how she understands and feels the music. It's very subtle. You can watch this clip 20 times and not see this, but it's very, very revealing. Diamonds are forever. They are all I need to please me. They can steal it and tease me. They won't be in the night. Have no fear that they might. Deserve me. <laughs> it's like a signature of hers, the hand movements. But especially because it's a cappella, she needs that hand to be the equivalent of the musical accompaniment. It does remind me a little bit of the part at the end of Feeling Good, the indoor performance where in the long run at the end, she's conducting herself. If you look at her hand <laughs> there, that's another... Yeah. Great one for her. Yeah, yeah, she's going, herself like, her going up. Like yeah. That. Thank you, Chris, for coming all the way from Hawaii. And yeah. this is a bit of a special podcast for us because we've been gathering the gold nuggets and we put them all together to form a crown, to crown the end of our season. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, for being Thank on you. this journey with us. Thank you, guys. So, Pontus, it's been quite a season that we've had, and this is a very fitting finale. And I'm sure you would not mind a bit of a summer recess so that you could recharge your batteries and that we can recontinue sometime in September with our next season. Does that sound okay for you? Yes, that's fine, Alan. I'm ready for season three in September, so let's okay. do that. Okay, so we'll fill our freezer with some episodes ready to defrost for when September comes around. That sounds good. Okay. Pontus, it's been a great year. We've surprised the other angels, and we've even surprised ourselves. It's been great fun, yeah. and thanks for coming along for the ride, Pontus. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Alan. I'm, I'm very happy to do this podcast with you, and it's always fun to invite guests. You never know what you're going to get. It's, <laughs> it's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's sort of like every fortnight, there's a new Christmas present, and it takes two weeks to unwrap the Christmas presents. Yeah. And, and also, it's exciting to see what will happen in season three with the progression of Angelina Jordan's career. If it takes off, like we're all hoping for, and it explodes, then who knows what kind of guests we can have in season yeah. three. Ten weeks is a very long time in the career of Angelina Jordan. So if we resume in nine or ten weeks... 
anything can happen. Yeah. And of course, our seasons are like 25 to 28 episodes, and we broadcast every two weeks. So that in itself is like a time period. I don't know how we do <laughs> oh, it. Me neither. Okay, it's been fun. Let's continue. See you in September. Yeah. Ciao. Okay, bye. That's all, folks.